Hello, sports fans and hockey fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today, I'm going to go over how to play the board game Stratomatic Hockey, the board version, because it is different than you'll be accustomed to seeing with the computer version um, in, in some ways. Well, really, in the biggest way, it's that there's not as many line changes in the board version. So anyway, um, let's go over what you should have to play a Stratomatic Hockey card and dice game. Uh, the first thing you want to make sure you have is a split deck. So there's that right there. And this is the split... This is... Uh, yeah, this is the split deck that'll tell you, you know, what different things are going to happen at different, here, yeah, there we go, at different times while you play the game. And, uh, and it, it, it acts as the, uh, also when you need to get a split, um, a split roll or a split decision, it will act like the 20-sided dice does in the baseball or the, um, you know, the split deck in the baseball game. However, if you want to use a 20-sided dice, you can use that. Um, in instances where you don't need uh, something like, you know, um, for instance, say, uh, you know, you don't need to know what happens on a breakaway or you don't need to know what happens on a rebound or something like that. But um, if you just need the result like you would on a face-off, you could use the split deck. Then you have a, an action deck. And this uh, basically tells what happens, you know, in the act here. Here we go. Upside down. Um, this will tell you which to refer to home or visitor and the results for the home and visitor and what happens. You will also put in this deck um, throughout at various times there will be a forward line change card there's one defensive line change card and two forward line change cards so you will um, pick you know as you go through the deck you will come up with one of those and they will yield a um, you know it's Kind of like a you know a reminder to change your offensive lines or change your defensive lines. Now with with the action deck, there are thirty of these cards. So uh, I think the instructions say to put the first forward line change ten cards in. Put the defensive line change five cards later, and then put the next. Um, forward line change I think it says uh, five cards after that really I don't think it really matters as long as you do them at certain intervals like sometimes I put it eight card I put the first forward line change eight cards in and then the next and then the defensive line change six cards after that and then maybe the next offensive line change ten cards after that it it's not really a big deal as long as they're spread out and they're done at uh, you know certain intervals. Now this is also the timing device in the basic game. And by the way, this is the uh, what we're what we're going over today is the basic game instructions because I don't um, I haven't learned how to play the advanced or super advanced. And really, I don't have any desire to learn how to play those because the basic game uh, seems to play quite well. Um, you know, the results seem to be uh, realistic results. So anyway, that's the timing device. Once you get through the, uh, the action deck, the small action deck, that's the end of the period. And so that's why I mean, you only get two offensive line changes. So you'll get a total of um, three offensive lines out in a period. And you'll only get um, two defensive lines out in a period. And we all know that doesn't really happen. But that's how the basic game for strat uh, hockey is set up. So uh, 
then you, uh, of course, you have two dice that you will roll at various times. And you have a, uh, a marker for the puck to um, show who has the puck. I just move it around the board to whoever uh, the, the game says has the puck. And then you read the results off the cards. So it's actually not that complicated. Um, I know when you look at the directions, you look at the game, you look at the directions, it can seem like it's kind of um, intimidating and a little confusing and maybe uh, complicated, but it really isn't. So uh, let's start off by, you know, walking through and seeing what kinds of things happen. So the first thing you want to do is you pick a split card to get a, uh, to get a face off result. And also, I want to point out you. This is this is the basic uh, the basic chart. It has most of the results for the um, basic game, like the face-offs and the penetration and and all of that. So, but we'll get to those. So we pick a, we pick a card, and at the top of this card, you can see there is a fifteen. So that's a fifteen. You go to the. Um, you go over here to the face-off chart. This is a, a skinny column along the side. And 15 says that it goes to the visitor's left defenseman. So um, we'll say that Chicago, this is the 1994-95 Chicago Blackhawks versus the 94-95 Quebec Nordiques. So uh, let's see, what was that? Left defenseman? Visitor left defenseman, yes. So Gary Suter starts with the puck. Now what you do is you pick this card, the first action card, and you see that it says for visitor passing J. So we will go to, um, we'll refer to Gary Suter's passing J. He has a passing column and you can see right here. You can see the different columns there's um, outside shot, inside shot, breakaway, passing, and defense. And you just refer to the appropriate one. So we go down to passing J, and it says he has an inside, he, he allows an, in, or he gives an inside shot to the left wing. So you give the puck to the left wing, and that's Tony Amante. And an inside shot is the best shot that you would want. So you just we'll, we'll just go ahead and take the inside shot. We roll the dice. We come up with an eight, and an eight says there's a save and a rebound. Um, so what we do is we pick another split deck card, and we refer to rebound. And the rebound on this card says offensive left defenseman if his defensive rating or if his offensive rating is two or more if not the opponent has control so we will look at his off at uh, let's see offensive left defenseman that is gary Suter, and his offense rating is a four so he gets the rebound shot because that's more than two we roll a seven and we refer to gary Suter's. um uh, rebound and breakaway column as I pointed out before that he has and we go down to number seven and that says goalie rating so what we do now is we roll a dice again and we refer to um, the goalie rating of Jocelyn Thebo who is the goalie for the Nordiques and six is a goal so all of that resulted in a goal and it is one nothing Chicago, just like that. Um, so now we'll pick another card for another face-off. And that's a 14. And the 14 says it goes to the visitor right wing. So the uh, right wing, Dirk Graham has the puck. And then we pick another card off the action deck. And again, you refer to the visitor side of the action deck. And it says, lose puck outside shot for opponent. Now, when it says outside shot for opponent, what I always uh, take that to mean is the, the person right across the board from him. So 
the person that lines up against him. So in this case, it goes to um, Quebec's left wing. And, his, and the left wing is Wendell Clark, who now has it. And it said he has an outside shot. And it did not say outside shot only. So that means that Wendell Clark has options. He can try to penetrate inside to get an inside shot for himself, or he can try to pass the puck. Now, um, since I have to, I'm going to be showing you both of those. So we will try the, uh, what is his penetration rating? All right, his penetration is a four. So it, that's the best penetration. So we will try that. So we picked an 18, and it says 1 to 13, he gets inside, and so he did not, he failed to get inside, and so he loses the puck right across uh, the ice again to Dirk Graham. So now we pick another card, and that is, um, the visitor now has it, and it says possible breakaway. So now when it says possible breakaway, you take the split card and you refer to the breakaway section on the split card and it says right wing or center if the right wing has the puck. And, um, and he, um, he actually does have the puck. So it would be the center if breakaway penetration rating is two or more, if not lose to opponent. So his breakaway penetration rating, and you can see these, these players, and that's Jeremy Roenick, by the way. And you can see that the players are rated for all of those things, all of these things that we're going to go over, uh, getting inside and defensive rating and offensive rating and penetration. But anyway, he uh, breakaway penetration rating is two or more. And it is two or more. So... Jeremy Roenick has um, an inside or a breakaway shot, and that's a six. And that is also a goalie rating. And so we will roll the dice again on Thibaut and refer to that. And that's a seven. It's save either defenseman. So then you pick which defenseman you want to give it to. I'm going to give it to Uwe Krupp, the right defenseman. And so now he has the puck. Now you pick another action card, and this time we're going to refer to home. So this is the action card, the next one in the deck. And it says, lose puck outside shot for right defenseman. So he loses the puck. The right defenseman is Cam Russell, and he picks it up, and he has an outside shot. Now, as I told you before, you can try to penetrate inside if it doesn't say outside shot only. If it were to say outside shot only, you could only take an outside shot. But he does have the option of passing. So what I will do is I will pick a card and I'll have him pass instead of try to get inside because we've already gone over that. So you pick another split deck card and you refer to, as you can see, it has a passing section. And you refer to the passing section and that says against even, which is both sides are even, there's not a power play. There's an inside shot for the left wing or right wing. Left wing is outside the uh, parentheses. So um, that would be the first choice if the left wing wasn't the one with the puck and he w isn't. Against, and so um, what that is, it's an inside shot for the left wing because then it just goes on. It says if it's, um, if, there, if you're shorthanded or if you are, um, and if there's a, an intimidation from the right, there would be intimidation from the right defenseman against a power play. Um, but there is, it's not a power play. The sides are even. So what it ends up being is it's an inside shot for the left wing. So we will switch it over to the left wing. And that is Tony Amante. And he has an inside shot. We refer to two, and that's a goalie rating. We roll on Jocelyn Thibault, and that's a seven, and that's a save either defenseman, and we will give it back to Uwe Krupp. And so you pick another card, and now the home team has it, and under home, as you can see right here, it says passing L. 
So we refer to Uwe Krupp's passing column and we go down to L and it says inside shot right wing. So um, we refer to the right wing. We give the puck to the right wing and he has an inside shot, which is the best that he can have. And that's an 11. And that is lose to the defensive center. So his shot was um, the defensive center intercepted it or knocked it down and got control of it. And that's Jeremy Roenick. So we pick another uh, card and now the visitors have it again. And that says passing J. So we refer to um, Jeremy Roenick's passing J. And that is inside shot for right wing. Again, that's the best possible result you can hope for. So we take the inside shot and that's an eight and that's a save and a rebound. And so again, we would refer to the rebound and that says offensive left defenseman. So the offensive left defenseman is Gary Suter and he has a rebound shot. That's a seven and that's a goalie rating plus. Now this is key. We will roll for the goalie rating, um, but the plus sign means that if the Blackhawks had been on a power play, that would have been an automatic goal. That's the way I understand it. But since the sides are even, you have to roll on Jocelyn Thibault's card to see if he makes the save. That's a three, and it's a save any defensive player. So we can give the puck to anybody on the Quebec Nordiques. We'll give it to Andre Kovalenko, the right wing. And so now you pick another card. And this, the home team has it, so it says passing J. And we go down to his passing J section, and he has an in, he gives an inside shot to the left wing. So we will go over to the left wing. They have an inside shot. We roll the dice, that's an eight. It's a save and a rebound. We pick another card and we refer to the rebound section. And that's an off offensive center has a rebound. And that's gonna be Claude Lapointe. We roll the dice for him. He gets a nine, that's a save in the right wing. So the defensive right wing comes up with it. And so that's basically how the game uh, plays if we keep uh, now on a pot what happens on a power play if there was to be a result that says um, that you have a power play and let's look at an example of that right here on the home side if the home team had the puck on this action card it says uh, opposing defensive players penalty rating AA a, B, C, or D. That's every penalty rating. So the person um, across from whoever would have had the puck would automatically have a penalty. There would be a two minute penalty. Now, sometimes it'll say just A, 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 B, and C and D. There's, um, you lose the puck to that other player. But in this case, there would be a penalty when there is a penalty, you automatically just pick two cards. Now, see, there's the forward line change. You would probably do that afterwards. But anyway, other than the forward line change, you would pick two cards to let the time go by, to signify the time going by. And then you would refer to the, um, you would refer to the penalty chart. So what you do is you pick another you pick another split deck card, or you refer to the power play chart, and that's a 17. So the chart that I'm referring to here is this one right here. It's got all kinds of results, one to 17. And 17 says, uh, if one or more four rated defensive players, so you would count up the number of four rated defensive players and if they have one or more if they have even one then you read the results and the results here are an outside shot for the right wing an outside shot for the right defenseman 
an inside shot for the center and an inside shot for any player. So you would go through those in order. If you score a goal on any one of them before you get to the last result, then the, the uh, uh, penalty is over and you resume, resume play with another face off. Um, however, um, if you go through all of those and you don't get um, that result, if you don't get um, a goal, then um, after the inside shot for any player, you would go off of whatever his inside shot said and you would continue play from that point on only at, you know, at, at even strength. So that's how you would go through a power play. Um, so that's basically, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's basically the basic game of Stratomatic Hockey and how it is played. It is pretty self-explanatory. You've got all the columns, you've got the um, ratings and the tendencies and all of that. But I wanted to go through this and show everybody um, how, I, at least how my understanding of how the game is played. If the, there's veterans out there that have played, you know, hundreds of uh, uh, Stratomatic hockey board games and, you know, I misled somebody or told somebody the wrong thing, then um, you can, uh, you know, let me know in the comments. Also, I want to point out there is also at the uh, bottom of these cards, um, at the bottom of the cards, there is if you're score for scoring purposes, it'll say assists. And um, you can go through a progression of, um, you know, what who you, th you think the assist should go to. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that works because this says any player eight and then center one, left defenseman two, right defenseman three, right wing four, left wing five. So I'm not really sure how you would determine that. Let's see what one of the other ones says. Yeah, the other, it says about the same thing. So, but that's just for scoring purposes. I mean, the important thing is who got the goal and you're going to know that. Um, so, um, and, and also if somebody passes, like if it said, you know, uh, for instance, Gary Suter had the puck and then it says inside shot for center and that's Ronick, then you know that it, one of the assists is definitely Gary Suter. That is at the bottom of the card is just for referring to like, uh, you know, a secondary, um, assist. I don't know what you do. Maybe you, maybe you pick another split deck number. For instance, this says any player eight center two, right defenseman three, right wing five goalie two and left defenseman four. So you pick another card. If none of those comes up, then nobody got the secondary assist. This is a six, and six is um, six is not here. So nobody would have gotten the secondary assist. Um, or if it, you know, uh, the first assist or the only assist, if you didn't know how the player got the puck. Like if he just stole the puck and then he scored and you don't know that there was any other player involved anyway, then there, and you pick the next split deck and one of those numbers doesn't come up, then nobody got the assist. It was just the guy stealing the puck and scoring. So that's my understanding of the game. It is not a very complicated, like I said, it's not a very complicated game to play once you get into it. Um, and you start playing and uh, you know I really enjoy it I wasn't sure that I was going to it's been 35 years since I played this but I really do enjoy it it's great um, and uh, I will be putting this up both on my regular channel and on my hockey channel many of you may know that I also have a hockey channel in it 
in um, addition to the regular main Sportsman Z channel, putting it up on both because um, it'll get more exposure on the main channel and it is Stratomatic, which I do have on my main channel. But also I'll put it up on the hockey channel. I just started that channel though. It doesn't have a lot of subscribers. Not a lot of people know about it. So to get it maximum exposure, I'm going to have it on both channels. So, but if there's anything I missed, certainly leave it in the comments. Let me know. I'm always interested because I do want to know how to play this game and make sure I'm playing it correctly. Um, but for right now, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.